Happy Friday, everyone. Yes. I just, uh, I'm super excited about today's interview because we got the one and only Kong Sim coming on the show. Uh, this guy has been in basically everything. I mean, once you see this picture on the YouTube channel and once you see the thumbnail for everything that we've been posting and promoting about him, you're like, oh, it's that guy. He's yes. been in literally everything. He tells some fantastic behind the scenes stories, too. He does. I mean, <laughs> like, just wait till you hear him. Great career advice with these behind the scenes Seriously. stories. So, and how he got started, epic tale you do not want to exactly, miss. Exactly, exactly. Most notable from right now is uh, Dead to Me on Netflix, yes. which is a huge hit series on Netflix right now. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to start streaming along, binging it. There's like two seasons out right now, so catch yep, up, yep. guys. Catch up. But that is later on the show. Now, let's get a little crazy. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Holy moly, we're on episode 128 this week. Yes. It's absolutely insane. We got two more weeks to go, and then we'll be on literally episode 130. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm excited about this one. This is a good episode, though. Our big Labor Day episode, if you will. Right. Labor Day weekend yeah. episode. Sure. Seriously, sure. seriously. But before we do anything else, before we do anything else, we have to thank our fans out there. Yes. We appreciate you guys because we ranked number 12 out of 50 on the Hot 100 or Hot 50 podcast. Yes. Oh my goodness, for Podcast Magazine. We are so freaking thrilled about this. We couldn't have done this without you guys uh, streaming along every week. We just appreciate you guys so much. I mean, it's epic to debut you on the list at number 12 right like we jumped past all the other it's just number 12 yeah that's an epic debut guys so whew, yeah thank you it's epic thank man. you it's super I mean, epic but you guys know by now your host with the most myself jlo fantastic and the one and only mouth what's up oh boy oh boy we got some industry news of course mm. disney got a lot to talk about this week yep, that's yep. why you see at least if you're watching the youtube video you see the disney funkos but of course <laughs> of course we got some Warner Brothers. We got some CBS Viacom, oh, yeah. Viacom oh, CBS yeah. uh, stuff that literally broke today on Friday, September fourth. Uh, Mulan is out now, uh, so if you guys want to check that out, be sure to do that uh, for that thirty bucks. Mm. Uh, but we'll we'll talk about it a little bit later. We'll talk about it. You can wait uh, a little bit longer, and it'll be free. Uh, but you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, but before we get that started, you know, we got to plug our merchandise website, mm-hmm. CrazyAntMedia.com. Be sure to head over there. Click on the merchandise tab go down to shop now and start rocking the latest and greatest crazy ant media gear we just had some more people buy some items from the website we appreciate you guys so much we got an honorary crazy shirt being shipped out here soon and i mean i just love it man i love seeing people wearing our designs and rocking the crazy ant media logo and just it's amazing to see it's amazing to see it is so so we got y'all voting us into the the 12th spot on the top 50 the hot 50 you're buying up the merchandise you're listening to the show every week you're following us with that's not all. It's not all. We got a, a big contest, end of summer contest coming up. We got a little, mm, it's going to be yeah, a biggie. Buddy. Details are going to be, we're going to release the details soon. And trust me, guys, this is one you're going to want to follow and sign up for because the prize is pretty damn epic. Especially if you're an up-and-comer trying to break into the entertainment industry. We got some stuff that is invaluable, man. Yes. Absolutely invaluable that will just put you ahead of the rest. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> There it is. Details there it is. There it is. Soon. But uh, we got to bring it down a little bit because that mm. broke something that broke last Friday after we recorded the episode. Um, it's absolutely insane. Uh, Chadwick Boseman passing away at the age of forty three after a four year battle with uh, colon cancer. Yeah, it's super sad. I just, man. I was, I was like, I couldn't even come up with words to say anything. I mean, for for. I guess like so many others out there, this one hit me really hard. Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, it was just so out of nowhere. And when you think about what this guy was able to accomplish and the things that he did while having the cancer yeah. and battling through it is just freaking yeah. unreal to me. His whole Black Panther run. His whole Black Panther. Guys, this guy did seven films after being diagnosed with cancer yeah. uh, back in 2016. So he did Marshall, 
Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, 21 Bridges, The Five Bloods, and the one that's coming out on Netflix, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. All while battling cancer, going through chemo, having surgeries. All I mean, it's just mind-boggling to me yeah. that this guy... They said apparently in this last one, he was in excruciating pain mm. and kept it to himself and, and, and through it and um, just... Wow. Well, I'm the only thing I can say, I'm happy that he's not going through that pain anymore. And I mean, I just thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to his family and friends and everybody a part of the Marvel community, everybody who even worked with him on any sort of projects, because I just heard he he like he lit up every single room that he walked into Mm. with just with knowledge, education and just just a people person, man. Definitely one of the most talented people in the entertainment industry right now, and he will definitely be missed. I mean, without doubt, without doubt. It's hard to forget the images of him at the cancer hospitals with the kids with yeah. cancer helping them go through and not once ever letting on. He himself was doing it at the same time. Yeah. Like, just heartbreaking, man. And Disney, rightfully so, aired Black Panther that Sunday, yeah. last Sunday, um, in tribute to him. And then... Um, a special Chadwick Boseman, a tribute for a king. Well, no surprise here. 11 million viewers tuned in that Sunday, giving the network some of its best rating it's had all summer Makes and sense. delivering the strongest performance for any feature film on broadcast television since Frozen back in 2016. Dang. Um, so if you missed it, do not worry. It was it was a really touching, really heartbreaking tribute to watch, but a, a really good tribute by ABC News. If you missed it, it's on Disney Plus right now. So yep. if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you can check that out. So Definitely, definitely. And I mean, bringing it back up, bringing it back up. <laughs> Speaking of Disney Plus, <laughs> I, well, we teased a little bit earlier at the beginning of the show. That's right. Starting today, Disney Plus subscribers will be available to purchase the premium package, the premium access, as they say, yes. uh, to Mulan. And of course, we've talked about it multiple times before. The fee is $29.99 and on t- October or November 2nd, at 11.59 Pacific Time, uh, the premiere access will close, and then Mulan will be released on Disney Plus for no extra charge uh, December 4th. So yes. that means just wait till December yeah, 4th. Yeah, three months from today, if you're a Disney subscriber, Disney, you'll, you can watch it for free. Yeah. Now, seriously. if you want to put out that 30 bucks premiere access fee, go ahead. Yeah. I'm waiting three months to watch it. Yeah. It's okay. It's if right. you have a family of three or more, that's definitely worth it. Kudos. Like, that's definitely sure. worth it because $10 a ticket right there. Boom. Right. But if you're like a single person, just wait. You don't need to freaking pay 30 bucks for just yourself or just your girlfriend to watch this film. No. I, don't, I don't think so. And it's I mean, a... I think Disney is going to learn that this isn't a good thing no i, I mean yeah. we, we we're bet definitely behind disney on a lot of things but this right here if you're already a disney plus subscriber this is just it dumb i think it's just yeah. ludicrous. And, and, and i mean honestly we weren't sure that the idea of even putting it out there for 30 bucks was smart the idea of telling people that you can watch it for free just a couple months from now when you're trying to sell it for 30 bucks is an even dumber move yeah. <laughs> like why would you tell people they can watch it for free in a couple months if you're trying to get them to spend 30 bucks to buy it like I, I don't know. It's don't basically know. the equivalent of not going to the movie theater and waiting for it to come to Red yeah, Box. Like, yeah. I mean, just, just, mm. just, just wait on it. Just wait on it. But um, other exciting news that we are definitely behind, and yes. this is super close. <laughs> Freaking October 30th is going to be the drop date for season two of The Mandalorian. Yes. So super excited. We talked about before shooting had already wrapped on season yep. two uh, before Corona hit, and now they're already underway for season three this is what i'm talking about this is what they are providing to the streaming content that no one else is they are putting out original content at a decent rate netflix takes a year and a half Mm. two years before putting out another freaking season of like the crown or some shit but disney (laughs) disney plus is doing it right i mean it, it fucking this is so smart this is a way to definitely get ahead of the game when it comes to the streamers we all talk about all the time Time that they are competing with Netflix. They are the one to chase right now, but they're going to catch up quick if they keep doing shit like this. Exactly. And see, there's the reason right there. Wait until next month. 
Get your Disney Plus subscription. Watch Mandalorian Season 2. Then you got, what, like 58 days before you can watch Mulan right. for free. <laughs> you see? It's that simple. It's a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Disney is a roller coaster this this, this week. Yeah. But we're really pumped about Mandalorian. And now we're going back down again. Not so pumped about why are they making a, a live-action haunted mansion. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Because Pirates, I, I mean, okay, Pirates did awesome. It was a huge franchise. It yeah. was brilliant. But Haunted Mansion? Right. What? What? When I think of Haunted Mansion, I think of uh, that Eddie Murphy movie when they, yeah. they move into the, like the house and shit, which yeah. was subpar at best. So, eh. You don't eh. have to make a movie out of every ride. You really don't. You don't. No. I'm just it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We, we love you. Disney, you guys know we love you. But yes. But come on now. Come on. Just, some, are, some are just not good ideas. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Agreed. Um, this is <laughs> exciting, though. ABC Signature uh, has announced yeah. that Michelle Obama and ATTN uh, will team up for the primetime comedy special of uh, Vomo. Yes. V- Vomo? Vomo? Vomo. Vote Vomo. or miss out. Vote or miss out. It's going to be hosted by Kevin Hart. Epic, epicness, and it's going to be an hour-long special airing on September 14th, and will urge viewers to practice their civic duty to go out and vote for the upcoming presidential yeah. election in November. This is super smart. It's going to be smart. epic. Yeah. It, 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 obviously, it's got Kevin Hart hosting it, so you know comedy is involved. Of course. There's going to be comedy sketches. Uh, there's going to be a big musical number, uh, from what I understand, and in between all that, they're going to have little messages from from people trying to get you to go out and vote and rightfully so if you're not going out and vote what are you doing right what are you doing and man some big people uh tiffany haddish scarlett johansson will ferrell jay leno Jaden and willow smith tim allen and a bunch more plus politicians yeah arnold schwarzenegger a few others um cindy mccain um i mean just a bunch of politicians are joining michelle also yeah all with the effort to get you out to vote in november super exciting man. you know when you get democrats and republicans all coming together, all together under michelle to tell you to go vote we're in a bad spot you you we're in you, a bad you, spot you know where they're trying to tell you not to vote for yeah i'm just you know yeah and by the way, you can't vote twice. You can't vote you in. You can't from vote the, twice. You can't mail in a ballot and then vote go and no, vote. Like, no, not in North Carolina or like, any other state ever. Like, ever. Like just, just you can't do it. Jesus. Uh, but <sighs> uh, this it just shows. I mean, like we talked about before, when educating people, entertainment go through the avenues and yes. revenues of entertainment, so people can get educated by things. I think that is the best possible way. Exactly. I know where he can end up though after. He's voted out in November. No, I hope yeah, not. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I really think don't want to see him I, there. No, <laughs> but I think it's going to happen. I think Tyra Banks is going to call him up, and he's going to join Dancing with the Stars the following <laughs> season. You know. it, it would be great. He loves live reality TV. He likes he women does. in little scanty clothes and everything. He, he'd be perfect if he's not in jail. Um, anyway, that's a political statement. Uh, <laughs> the reason I bring that up is because ABC, did you see? They released Dancing with the Stars' new cast yeah. for the upcoming season, the first without Tom and Aaron. Nah, so oh, sad. Oh, oh, oh. It's fucked up. Um, hmm. Tiger King's Carol Baskin, rapper Nelly, Selling Sunset's Chriselle Stoss, the um, newly divorced from um, uh, Kevin from uh, This Is Us, yeah. Justin Hartley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's sad. Uh, former NBA star Charles Oakley. Netflix's cheer star Monica Aldama, Disney Channel actress Sky Jackson, who I can't believe is a grown-ass adult now. It's like <laughs> scary as all get out. One Day at a Time's Justina Mikado, The Reels' Jenny Mai, Catfish's Nev Shulman, Olympic figure skater Johnny Weir, th- that was a given, uh, Super Bowl champion Vernon Davis, actress Anne Hesch, Backstreet Boys singer A.J. McLean, The Bachelor's Caitlin Bristow, and Chesapeake Shore's Jesse Metcalf. This is subpar at best. I mean, I, best. I, I'm, I'm like... I'm not watching. Remember, she said she was going to deliver huge A-listers. Nobody answered the phone. I mean, what... what Nobody answered I, I'm, the phone. I'm just... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. I'm flabbergasted. I, I don't know. It's, a uh, lot of women will turn in for Jesse Metcalf. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the Hallmark people will flock, and he, you know, Desperate Housewives, and he's got a pretty significant following, but... The, I mean, 
I know. And I've talked <laughs> about this multiple times before. Get off of Tiger King's dick. Like, yeah. no one cares about this shit anymore. <laughs> That's it, right. It was a black hole that people went down for quarantine. Nobody cares about this shit anymore. Leave it alone. That's right. You're beating a dead horse. Yes. Like, especially. L- literally. Or a dead tiger. <laughs> like, like, whoa. That's sad. Oh, That's I'm sad. sorry. I'm it's, sorry. Oh, man. Uh, but other things happening at Disney, ABC, Hulu, all those good places. Uh, Emma Roberts, niece of Julia Roberts. Yes. Epic actress and her so, uh, uh, and her uh, Belarus TV banner have signed a first look deal with Hulu. Uh, the first project to be developed is Tell Me Lies, based on a book by Carola Lovering. Lovering, Lovering, sure, sure. Lovering, Love for Me, Lover Me Tender. Um, <laughs> the story follows Lucy Albright as she arrives on campus uh, of her small college away from her mother, whom she is never forgiven for an act of betrayal mm. in her early teen years. So a regular teenager. Yes, uh, yes. Um, she embraces college life and all it has to offer, but everything changes when she meets this Steven guy and fucking <laughs> fucks everything up, uh, who has mysterious, uh, mysterious me, past of his own and addicting fucking personality apparently and so yeah yeah doing big things doing big i things mean you and know stuff. Uh, with, with her dad with her dad and her and her knee i mean uh, aunt being huge stars yeah i mean it's only fitting that she's, yeah. she's following along and, and and doing quite well herself um and if they don't use tell me lies by fleetwood mac it's a horrible mishap agreed but they should totally use that song agreed uh some sad things not really <sighs> sad things but disappointing things i should say the batman has halted production yet again you know why because the bat himself, Robert Robbie P, um, has caught the corona. So fuck. If <laughs> Batman it. got it, uh, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. If Batman got it. What? what how are the rest of us gonna knock? Yeah. It? Even I mean, the Rock. Like even the uh, Rock got seriously. that shit. It's scary, man. Wear fucking masks. Like sanitize your shit. Like. And do the all crazy the pretos- thing is, is that they took all the precautions. Yeah. Remember, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The UK said, "Yeah, you can go back, but you got to do this. You got to do this. Yeah. And we're gonna have this, and we're gonna have that. And just a couple days in, he got it. Yeah. Like what the fuck? I know. I mean that. The, and the, here's the crazy thing, though. They still have three months of filming to go. Jesus. I mean, they were seven weeks in, so they got us a badass trailer. Yeah. I love that trailer, but they still have three months yeah. to go, and so they're still hoping to have it done by the end of the year, yeah. but I don't know. Hopefully, it's just the two weeks of haltage, um, but if, so. it, if it's past that, man, that would that would push some things back and do some more rearranging to the calendar, I feel like, so the release calendar, yeah. so we yeah. shall see, man. Wear a mask. Exactly. Just come on. Exactly. Let's get this thing under control. Exactly. But one Media is attempting to drive up the HBO Max subscribers by offering a 20% discount off their regular price of $14.99. And it's starting today, you know, like four days after we signed up. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> I'm a little upset with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean. I signed up for HBO Max because I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? They gave me all that trouble with AT&T. You have it. You don't have it. You have it. You don't have it, right? I sign up. And on the day of. My bill, they offer me a a free month. Yeah. After I've paid my bill, now 20% off. After I've paid my bill. What the fuck? I know. It's super shitty, man. AT&T, get your shit together. I'm just blaming AT&T. <laughs> yes. Because, it's all, yes. I mean, they are definitely dabbling in Warner Media shit. So, man, it's crazy. It's <sighs> absolutely crazy, but... Go, Good for go, all y'all yeah. who can get it for eleven ninety nine. Go for it. Exactly. You can't watch it on Roku though. Good no. luck. A lot of good shit on there though. So yes. I mean, seriously, it's a loaded library. Yeah. It's totally worth the fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, so. especially for the films. Like, there's a lot of shit on it there. It is. Uh, but other exciting things happening at HBO Max. Uh, this must be just be a trend because <laughs> they're stealing every other network's shows and doing like a little cast reunion yeah like yeah. fucking they're doing a fresh prince of bel-air cast reunion at hbo max that's super exciting what so now you got west wing you got friends you got fresh prince yeah. i mean what's next guys what's next i mean huge i mean they're killing it with these things yeah. who doesn't want to tune in and watch this yeah i mean everybody does and this one's set to record like in a couple of days september 10th and uh, yeah is slated for hbo max around thanksgiving so, that's gonna be epic yeah i mean this will be the first one too so we'll, we'll get to see like the format kind of because mm. i mean i mean is it just going to be like a round table conversation talking about the show or like q a like you know i'm i'm intrigued to be honest i mean i we know 
West Wings they're going to be like redoing an epic episode. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for ones like this that they're just bringing everybody back, what what's it going to be like? It's uh, yeah, I'm real curious myself. Uh, one thing's for sure, it'll be epic and um and sad because you know unfortunately Uncle Phil won't be yeah, there. Yeah, that's super um, sad. So. It was a touching tribute when they all got together to pay tribute to him. So yeah. I would assume that would come up in this special. Right. I mean, you would Rest think, in peace, James Avery, man. Yes. Super Look, sad. Man, just a brilliant actor, brilliant actor. Uh, definitely, definitely. <sighs> that, mm, mm. Other things. Yeah. I mean, this one's interesting, right? though. Like, why? But we talk about it all the time, right? Like the, the conversion of gaming. Not gambling, gaming, just gaming, ga- gamers, gaming, gaming, woo right? DC Universe just had their big d- fandom event, did a lot of the gamer stuff mixed in with all the stuff. Well, now the CW figured that that's probably pretty good, right? Because that was huge. Yeah. So they're now in development of a gaming industry drama series that's going to merge the worlds of gaming and Hollywood. Oh, shit. Ooh. I mean, I, right now, they're, it's very parallel. I mean, we see Amazon, Netflix, all these places, they're turning these games into series and or films. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm excited. With I'm a excited. female lead. Yeah, even more exciting. I, I mean, <laughs> because, I mean, we need more diversity, and this is the way to do it. Exactly. Especially in the gaming industry. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. Not to say that they're not out there. I just haven't come across any, like, big female gamers. So, I'm excited no. to see this from their point of view so yeah good things good things but uh cw is also doing some other weird shit um pretty little liars is coming back guys mm. as a reboot mm. what the fuck mm. it, it was been literally like, what? three years yeah and like, not even a full three years i don't think it's like literally just ended that's so weird i, I why I, would you do that I, I don't know. And, and and even more so, it's a reboot that's going to have all new characters and an all new storyline. It's not even going to be like that rebooted. Yeah. It's just going to be a different take. We don't know if the original creator of Pretty Little Liars is even going to be involved in it. Right at all. Um, we, we, we don't know. Yeah. And right now, it's just being developed and they don't even have a network for it. Although really strong rumors are indicating that HBO Max, since they're in affiliated with warner brothers television who's making it and cw is going to be its home um i don't know if this is some sort of a weird twisted remember when um the uh, sabrina they yeah. said it was might make its home it maybe is this some sort of a backdoor deal yeah, maybe kind of a, I, I don't else, i don't within, know like but I just don't think you should do it. Yeah, and I mean, you got the Riverdale creator attached uh, for, to this thing. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I just don't understand why they keep doing this. Come up with new ideas, guys. There's freaking all these different people out there that have content that they are willing to provide to you. Exactly. So, and this one literally just died. Yeah. I mean, it was it, like, give it some air, man. Let it, let ah. I know. Super crazy. Oh, this is exciting. This one's really exciting. Yeah. Turner Classic Movies is set to air a 14-part documentary, Women Make Film, and it's going to be an exclusive look at female filmmakers worldwide and their work throughout the cinematic history. Yes. I'm super excited about I this mean, because, it's... I mean, we talk about great male directors all the time unintentionally, but we need more female directors to to be exposed to. I mean, Patty Jenkins and, I mean, like, you know, Ava DuVernay, like, all these good good people that i feel like deserve more light than what they are getting absolutely absolutely and oscar winner Catherine bigelow yeah she, she kind of broke the ceiling with the, with a female director to get an oscar and she's going to be heavily involved in it yeah um and the first arab woman mahufti talati yes mufita tahati i'm so sorry I, I i don't really i'm trying really hard to pronounce that name but she was the first arab woman to direct a full-length feature film mm. So, that's epic. I mean, it's going to go, like, all over the world highlighting female yeah. filmmakers. So, that's badass. And, I mean, especially with one of the narrators is Jane Fonda. I personally love Jane what? Fonda. Yeah. She's fucking great. So. And Thandie Newton. And Thandie Newton. Who's badass, right? Exactly. And, I mean, just, like. <sighs> so many great things, man. So many great things. But some surprising things that are happening. Shocker. Like, literally just happened today. is super surprising. A super successful show, by the way. Yeah. I'm talking about CBS Viacom's, or Viacom CBS. Yes, I always do that. Yes, you do. Um, Sorry. Um, Mom. Mom. Mom is a huge show right now. You know, Anna Ferris and Allison Janney. Well, guess what? Anna Ferris doesn't want to do that shit anymore. <laughs> she just was like, deuces. I'm out. Like, exit stage left. 
Fuck y'all. Like, apparently ahead of the show's eighth season, uh, news of her exit comes just days before the beginning of the production of season eight. So I'm guessing that writer's room is going crazy right now. Yeah. I mean, they're 10 days out from the cameras rolling. Yeah. 10 days out. And she's like, mm, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I'm going to see you later. 10 days out. <laughs> like, what do you, this show is literally about the mom and daughter. Yeah. You take the daughter out, like, mm. And, I mean, it says that she wants to explore other opportunities beyond the show. Do we remember Overboard? Overboard was not good. Mm, the mm. one that came out, like, two years ago, three years ago, the fucking the the remake, remake. Yeah. It, was, it was not good. I mean, I like Anna Ferris. Don't get me wrong. But the projects she's been put in place to do haven't been good except for Mom. So I'm just saying. And they don't even know how. They, they You know, uh, they've said – Chuck Laura said – they don't know how they're going to write off the character, but it will definitely happen in the first episode no, it has to. of season like, eight, you know. and they're going to address it and then move forward. But all I think about is t- Two and a Half Men, another yeah. Chuck Lore show where there was a quick exit of one of the stars, and it just wasn't the same. It wasn't. I mean, go out on they top. They tried. You know? They I tried. don't know if there's contract. Like, you're, you're stuck with the contracts or whatever, but find a way out and just ditch, man. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It sucks. I know my mom is going to be upset about this because she likes mom. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. Uh, But more or other things happening at, you know, Viacom CBS. Ha ha. (laughs) Ah. Um, The third season of Star Trek Discovery will introduce uh, the first non-binary and transgender characters into the Star Trek franchise. Yes. That's super exciting because, I mean, we've seen like Marvel, DC, everybody underneath the sun starting to do this, especially to establish franchises like this, like uh, Star Wars as well doing it. So I'm super pumped for this. I mean, shows more diversity. I'm glad glad the studio system is getting behind this movement to where everyone is loved everyone is accepted and everyone just wants to make money yeah and and, you know i think uh that that viacom cbs saw the huge success that they had with taylor on billions yeah on showtime and they're like okay that was a hugely popular character a hugely and and i feel like that kind of opened the door to say people will accept this people are okay with this and and let's move forward with it yeah so it's gonna be exciting oh blue del barrio will uh, make their screen acting debut as the uh, non-binary character Adira. Uh, And then uh, Ian Alexander will play the transgender character Gray, Mm. empathetic, warm, and eager to fulfill his lifelong dream of being a Trill host. Nice. So, yeah, I'm excited. I love the show. I've always thought it's a brilliant show. It's a great cast, and these two additions are going to be epic. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. And other things happening, we've been talking about the Scream reboot. Uh, another freaking people being cast. More people being cast. Jack Quaid. Yeah. Um, and he's attached now. It's unclear who he's going to play, but, I mean, he's attached. This guy is, like, the busiest guy ever. Speaking of Star Trek, he's on Star Trek Lower Decks. Yeah. The Boys 2, Season 2, just dropped. Star of that. This guy's everywhere. He is. I mean, good for him, man. He's kicking ass. Yeah. Go Jack. I'm super excited about that man. I mean, he came out of nowhere, too, in my he opinion. Really did. I did. I never saw him before The Boys, and now he's literally everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. kudos, man. Kudos. Um, other exciting news, but, I mean, we only fucking knew this shit from the beginning. Exactly. But whatever. <laughs> NBC Universal announced that Andrew Leeds, um, Alice Lee, Michael Thomas Grant, and Capitano. Hill Talker, Talker, um, <laughs> who has been like popping in and out as Zoe's extraordinary playlist, but now they're going to be promoted to series regulars yes. for season two, which only makes sense. I'm super excited about that. Me too, because the storyline with David and Emily, I just was always one of my favorites. Agreed. And now that we're going to be, and I think David is really going to step up now that the 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 matriarch of the family has passed. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, if you um, haven't seen it, patriarch, not matriarch. I don't know why i said matriarch his steam virgin is still there everything is okay she's still there she's good <laughs> she's good just kind of like whoop. but anyway i think i think that that role is going to step up and play a pivotal role in yeah. that, that transition so super pumped and you should check out our interview with andrew you it's should. really awesome he made me bake some great cookies he did it's fantastic he shipped them all across <laughs> and we got them and they were delicious yes oh man but nbc is also doing some amazing things i mean you know they need content for cable and their streamer uh, so they have put in development a father-daughter murder mystery drama mm. from Blind Spot creator and executive producer uh, Martin Giro and executive producer Alex Berger. Uh, the drama will focus on a dodged young reporter um, who witnesses a murder of 
of his sister. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, and then launches an investigation to find the people responsible enlisting to enlisting help for her strain from her estranged father and like a legendary and reclusive investigative journalist. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Blind Spot, so I think this is going to be great. Yeah. I mean, uh, these guys are brilliant and they're and they're really creative and they think outside the box with their storylines. So I, I'm excited for this one. Definitely. And any father daughter drama, I, I'm all down for. Yeah. I, I love right? that shit. Right. I love that shit. All right. This one is crazy. This one is crazy. We were talking about Riverdale, right? Like, like, okay, Marissa Nichols. What are you ready for this? Are you ready, Marissa Nichols from Riverdale? Yes, that one. She recently revealed that for the past six years uh. has been working undercover with agents from the FBI, Operation Underground Railroad, and local law enforcement hunting child sex predators. Damn. What? Yeah. She served as apparently the bait in these sting operations. So, um... She's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> like... So much so that Sony's like, let's do a show about it. Right. I mean, so they're developing a television series based on her story of an actress working undercover taking down child sex traffickers. Yeah, that's super fucking epic because that's a huge thing right now that not a lot of people talk about. So, yeah, man. Definitely expose it. Who Let's knew? Talk about the gray. Let's talk about the gray. <laughs> yes. Love it. I mean, Sony's actually doing some things this week. We're super surprised. <laughs> um, Adam Driver is set to star in Sony's 65. Uh, pilot uh, Plot details for the original story are being kept under wraps at the moment, but unknown when the film will undergo production as well. But they got Adam Driver. <laughs> That's so. right. So Sony's very concise and to the point. Adam Driver's going to star in our film 65. That's it. We don't, we don't know what it's about. We don't know when it's airing. We don't know anything. But he's in it. Yeah. So, all right. Good for you, Sony. Good for you. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Excited, excited about this oh, next yeah. one? Oh, yeah. Fucking because Philip Seymour Hoffman was a badass. Yes. But now his son, Cooper Hoffman, yes. and singer-songwriter uh, Elena Haim uh, was signed to join Bradley Cooper and Benny Sedefi and a Paul Thomas Anderson's 1970 San Fernando Valley feature set at MGM. We talked about this one a little bit earlier. We did. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about that because I I've honestly never seen him in a film. And does he got the chops? Yeah, this got... is his actual, uh, from what I understand, acting debut. Oh, then so shit. there we go. I'm super excited then. with Bradley Cooper. I mean, talk yeah. about a mentor to bring you in, right? right? And then your father was Philip Seymour Hoffman. I mean, come on. This guy's got to have chops, right? Hell yeah. Woo. Okay. We're yeah. going to follow that one for sure because oh, yeah. that just sounds like it's going to be an epic Definitely. Film. Definitely. <sighs> Coming back to television. Mm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Sundance Television is developing an original hour-long series starring and executive produced by the one and only... Arnold. Arnold, uh, yes. <laughs> The series is said to be a global spy adventure... Uh, with a father, Schwarzenegger, and a daughter that at center of the story. Uh, primarily, casting is underway and the role for the daughter. Um, and the spy adventure would mark his first major TV scripted role for Schwarzenegger. I never realized that. I never realized he was just a big blockbuster guy. Yeah, never on TV before in a scripted format. But <laughs> we all know he did that that one season of Apprentice. Yeah. Thank God it's a scripted series. Yeah. I know you all were scared shitless when he said at the top he was coming back to TV, right? Yeah. You were like, not The Apprentice again. No. 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 This sounds badass. This sounds maybe like Commando. Yeah. <laughs> like a TV version of Commando. Yeah. You know, maybe get Alyssa Milano. Oh, she's doing the Who's the Boss for you. But that would be epic. Bring Alyssa Milano. She'll play the older daughter. You guys do spy shit. Be badass. It would be badass. It would be badass. <laughs> I'll just say, we should say it's from the creators behind um, Scorpion. Yeah. So that'll be badass. I mean, maybe we'll see Robert Patrick, a little reunion of them who knows I don't mind I thought. uh uh this is interesting because i can't even honestly see this show as a um an animated show or a comedy or a comedy um and fox is developing an animated spinoff of the sci-fi drama and huge cult classic series the x-files uh, that will boost a more comedic uh take on the franchise and it's going to be titled x factor x files uh albuquerque Mm. Yeah. Mm. X Files, Albuquerque. What the fuck does that I, I mean? mean I, are they clearly trying to uh, Area Fifty One? I don't know. You know, aliens or whatever. But like, and apparently, you know what this sounds like to me? 
this sounds like Fox trying to do a, a a quick and cheap knockoff of Star Trek Lower Decks. Kind of. Where it's animated, it's a comedy. Yeah. Now they're doing, you know, kind of a funny take on Star Trek well, The yeah, Next even Generation. More so it's like it's gonna center around the uh the misfit agents. Exactly. Uh, like the two wacky, ridiculous, uh downright dopey for the original series. Though, exactly. So. so it sounds exactly like a quick cheap cheap ripoff of lower decks and i mean lower decks is huge right now yeah. so i mean you know people are trying to follow that shit so mm. it's pretty funny this next one we will definitely be following because it ain't going away apparently we talk about this every week put the boxing gloves on the mouse and netflix right okay well you remember a few months ago when we were talking about on uh, netflix they had that big lawsuit against fox before disney bought fox where they were Coaching, literally taking employees, you know, back and forth, getting them to bail on their contracts and then try to get other people to do that. Remember all that craziness? They lost. Remember that yeah. Netflix lost the lawsuit nine months ago? Well, apparently they're appealing that. Mm. And they're back in court with Disney again trying to fight this. Um, it's insane. We're not even going to go deep into detail on it. I just really said what it was about. It's literally about poaching employees from other companies and making them you know basically break their contracts and then come work for the other company and then basically trying to lure people back and forth i think we talk about it all the time all these you know exits from these companies to the other companies yeah it's happening all the time so this lawsuit is extremely important if it does turn out to go in netflix's favor about can you or can you not poach employees from other right. studios so we're going to keep an eye on it but it's definitely something that it just seems like is an ongoing battle between netflix and disney so right and saddled poor disney got saddled with it because this was against fox yeah. before they bought it so I don't know, man. I know. I know, right? Uh, Netflix is doing some interesting things, though. Uh, apparently, Netflix has launched a new watch-free site available free to any internet user worldwide. Uh, for free titles can be viewed on only the web via computer and or Android device. Uh, uh, this is shitty. Uh, Apple uh, yeah. services and iOS browsers are not supported by this program mm -mm. or this website. Uh, you can't stream the free content on connected TV platforms. Films available free to stream right now are Sandra Bullock's uh, Birds of Prey, Adam Sandler's comedy Murder Mystery, co-starring Jennifer Aniston, of course, uh, Boss Baby coming from DreamWorks, uh, and just a couple of others. This is interesting. So a lot of original content, it looks like. You it can does. stream a lot of Netflix's big original content. And... Uh, I think, I mean, blocking the Apple thing, that's obviously a stab at Disney because we all, we talk about all the time that Disney and Apple work very close together. Um, but this is just interesting to me. I mean, why would, why would you do this? I guess this is a way to compete with the Peacock, I, uh, um, but do you need, even need to compete with the Peacock? Like they're so far down on the totem pole, like they're right above quibi like yeah. i mean i don't i don't think that's necessary i don't think this is necessary i mean no they just released their numbers a, a month ago and they were huge they added a bunch of new subscribers yeah. and everything so why do you feel like you have to do something free to and don't get too excited about the tv stuff you see for free guys because they're billing it as stranger things and uh when they see us and grace and frank you know but it's only the pilot episode yeah you get to watch the pilot episode for free and that's it so um I don't know. It's not even that expensive. Yeah. It's like it's one of the cheaper streaming services. Just go with it, man. Yeah. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. I, I I really don't know why. That's kind of weird. Uh, that's very much like a YouTube thing. YouTube did that. YouTube Originals where they did the uh, – you could watch the pilot for free. And yeah. I mean yeah. that kind of just pisses people off. Like if they don't want to subscribe to the service, they're like – they don't want to subscribe to the I service. I got two words for you why you should just pay the eight ninety nine a month anyway. Cobra – Kai. Dude, seriously. Seriously. Holy that's shit. A, it's eight ninety nine a month. Just get it. Go. Just so do good. It. So good. I'm so glad that's on a good streaming mm, service. Me too. Um now the Game of Thrones creators, we all know that they signed a huge massive deal with Netflix and apparently they've been in the works with some shit. Yep. They've yep. been in the works. Uh they have set their first television project at Netflix as part of their deal. Um it's gonna be a drama they'll write since they're um 
leaving HBO. Mm-hmm. Their tenure at HBO left, and they have adapted it from the Chinese sci-fi novel uh, book trilogy, The Three-Body Problem, the story of humanity's first contact with an alien civilization. Ooh, interesting. Mm. Mm. Um, and it looks like Ryan Johnson. Everybody knows Ryan Johnson, so you might love him, you might hate him, but he's on to produce, <laughs> and as long as... Along with Alexander Wu and Rosamond Pike. Yeah, she's making the conversion, I guess, behind the camera. So yeah. that's kind of cool. It's very exciting. Badass. Man. Yeah, definitely. Um, and another poach, kind of, uh, not an executive, mm, but a poach mm. of creators. <laughs> um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have launched their own production company and they have partnered with Netflix for a multi-year deal uh, for scripted series, documentary series, documentaries, features, and children's programming. That's super crazy. And they already have several projects underneath this deal, including an innovative nature documentary series and an animated series that celebrates inspiring women. This is surprising to me because... Fucking Meghan Markle just put out that elephant documentary on Disney Plus. Yeah, and and you know they were first negotiating with Iger back in the day. Yeah, but I mean I guess they're not too upset with how they were. Um, the the family has been portrayed on the Crown. You yeah. know, Harry and Meghan are never going to be portrayed on the show, but I guess they were okay with how the family was. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. So now they really have the crown at Netflix. They really uh, do. Or, or at least, you know, lineage too. Yeah. Lineage too. You know. You know. <laughs> oh, man. But Jamie Foxx and uh, Tayona Paris, uh, Paris, or I'm, you guys know I'm awful yeah. with name, uh, have signed to join previously announced Giant Boyega and Marco and Netflix's upcoming sci fi film, The Clone Tyrone. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Super exciting. Uh, Netflix, everybody knows that this one was a huge bidding war, but what, what films are not a huge vid- bidding yeah, right. war right Nowadays. now for the streamers? Um, and Netflix won out on it. And the pilot follows a series of eerie events that thrust an unlikely lead trio, uh, Boyega, Fox, and Paris, um, onto a trail of uh, government conspiracy theories. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. So that's exciting. Yeah. And Macro, man, they are killing it. You know, behind raising Dion and like all these things that that were out lately, dude, they're just like whooping ass, yeah. signing deals with everybody. So good for them. Yeah, and it's fair, apparently Jamie Foxx is their golden boy right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, they just ordered another comedy series starring Jamie Foxx titled Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me. It's going to be a multi-camera comedy series and inspired by Foxx's relationship with his daughter. Mm-hmm. That's so super exciting. And it's the series is also going to star uh, David Allen Greer and Kayla Drew and Portia Coleman and Jonathan Kite. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'm surprised it's not starring Corinne. Right. If it, it's a father daughter show about their relationship, Why she's an guess? actress. Yeah. She's an actress too. So they, they could have started in it together. It would have been great. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, yeah, he's definitely their golden boy right now. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, all this shit is great. But at the same time, it's not. Because <laughs> Zack Snyder's new zombie movie, action heist movie, oh shit, yeah. Army of the Dead won't drop until next year, but Netflix has already greenlit the prequel uh, feature in the spinoff anime series, so that's super exciting. They're trying to fucking keep making deals with these people, I feel like, so that they stay busy, so that they will not branch out and go anywhere else. Yeah, and it, it's what's really cool is that the prequel is going to star one of the stars of the movie that's, that's going to be coming out as well as the anime series doing the same thing. Dave Bautista is one of the big stars in the movie, Ar- yeah. Army of the Dead. Um, so he'll he'll also be, it'll focus around him in the animated series. So. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, though. I mean, the movie hasn't even come out. You're already giving it a prequel and an animated series. You must really think it's going to do well. Exactly. So, but it is Zack Snyder, so I mean, yeah. it, it should. And by far, I, honestly, in my opinion, Netflix has the best best selection of documentaries and they are now developing a documentary series focused on the infamous Woodstock 99 Music Festival, a four day event designed to celebrate the 30 year anniversary of the original uh, 1996 festival and I mean there's already a documentary like a feature length documentary of the original festival Mm -hmm. so it's only right that they have the 99 Music Festival as well Uh, yeah 
And for anybody who doesn't know, that thing never happened. Yeah. It fell apart. It was it was a train wreck from start to finish. And we're going to find out why with this docuseries. So, I mean, you remember they wanted the original spot of Woodstock, and then they thought they had it, and then they didn't have it. Then they tried to go to a different spot, and that didn't work. And some stars were attached, like Miley Cyrus and all that. And then that didn't work. This thing was just awful. Yeah. So, to find out what really went down and why it all fell apart is going to be epic. Yeah, seriously. seriously. <laughs> you should never do Woodstock again. Yeah, I, I mean you, you know. can't redo Woodstock. Yeah, That's it's all basically the Fire Fest. Um, Amazon, <laughs> Amazon is doing some things. Alan Richardson has yes. been cast in the lead role of upcoming Jack Reacher series. He's currently stars in the DC Universe series Titans as Hawk Hall, aka Hawk or Hank Hall, aka Hawk. Yes, um, and uh, was in Blue Mountain State and all these good things. Oh yeah, but yeah. hopefully this doesn't interfere with anything he's doing with Titans because his character and his development has been amazing over the first two seasons it has been. um but this is interesting this is interesting he's definitely taller than tom cruise no yep, yep. um that's the first thing i noticed hands down the creator of jack reacher is going to be thrilled yeah because he made it perfectly clear that he never wanted tom cruise even though the films were successful he's just like that is not jack yeah. <laughs> reacher so i feel like alan's probably more what he was thinking yeah so we'll, we'll see but you know hey hey look i think it's i like alan and amazon always does well and i like the character i think it's gonna be good definitely definitely and amazon studios has acquired shelly an action comedy packaged that has jumanji next level aquafina and karen gillian uh, attached to reteam that's cool yeah it's super epic and uh jude wing uh to direct uh, the story takes place a decade after an embarrassing prom prank ran Shelly Wheeler Aquafina out of town and so hardened her heart that she became an ice cold hit woman. Holy shit. Aquafina is a hit woman. Revenge <laughs> threatens the bittersweet when she learns her next target is her former high school uh, tormentor. Holy shit. So mm. definitely going to get some uh, get some revenge. Get yes. some revenge. Uh, the two of them throwing down is going to be epic. Yeah. I mean, ca- come on guys. Yeah. Come on. It's going to be epic. Man, Amazon does some good shit. They do. They really do. They really do. Yeah, man. I mean, they're also developing a series about human rights lawyer uh, Jared Jenser uh, with Orlando Bloom attached to executive produce. Ooh. I mean, everybody knows uh, Carnival Row on Amazon Prime is doing really well with Orlando Bloom. Yep, so yep. this makes sense. The Untitled series is inspired by Jenser and his firm. He and his team worked to free prisoners of... Kunsen, uh, human rights prisoners in uh, high risk areas throughout the world's most difficult hot zones, which is mm. intense, man. It's yeah. Intense. I mean, that's cool. Uh, that's a good first project for Bloom under the deal. Yeah. You, as you guys, if you don't know, he signed a deal. And you should know because we talked about it. <laughs> so uh, last December. Um, yeah. Like I said, Amazon kicking ass, and rightfully so. They need to because Apple's coming up. Apple is crawling on them. They are. John Ridley and Carlton Cuse developing a limited series for Apple that's going to revisit Hurricane Katrina. Mm. Oh. Damn. Yeah, this is based on a book, Five Days at Memorial. It's going to chronicle the first five days at a New Orleans hospital after Hurricane Katrina made its landfall. Floodwaters rose, power failed, the heat climbed, exhausted caregivers. I mean, if you guys remember anything about that, the levees broke. The storm did not make landfall there. The eye passed over in Mississippi, but the levees broke and caused all kinds of havoc in New Orleans from Katrina. And this is going to show that. And man, that's going to be intense. It is going to be intense. It's going to be intense. Especially for the people that were there and like going through it. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, you remember that helicopters having to get them off roofs and everything. And like, I mean, just Brad Pitt in a boat. Picking people up. Yeah. Like, Brad was literally there helping people. It was just crazy times. Because he's man. a great guy. He is a great guy. No, he no. is. A, he was on roofs, too. Yeah. He had shirt on. Yeah. A little bit different circumstances. You know. But, you know. You know. <laughs> Mariah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> Mariah Carey. There's she no loves way to Christmas. Tra- there's no way to transition. No, there was no. A shirtless Brad Pitt to Mariah Carey. There's no easy transition there. There's not. We, let's just say Mariah Carey loves Christmas. Maybe she wants a shirtless Brad Pitt for Christmas. Maybe. There's your transition. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Mariah loves Christmas, and she's going to do a special, Mariah Carey's Magical Christmas Special. She's going to combine music, dancing, and animation for Apple. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's so funny. Uh, all I want for Christmas. I mean, it it's the number one song 
Every she goes every back time. to the top of the charts yeah. every year at Christmas time. It's making her a boatload of money. I'd love Christmas too. Right. That's just all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I mean this is kind of the only thing she's doing right now, so it makes sense. It makes <laughs> I mean, sense. It's gonna have surprise guests. Let's hope it's not Bieber this time. Right. Will the ex Tommy Matola come back? Right. I mean, he was that guy. He was the cute guy in the in the video with the reindeer in the snow. And remember the original video? <laughs> the ex husband? Where's that guy? Tommy Matola? You know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But now it is time for our guest segment. We got the one and only Kong Sim coming yes. on the show to talk about his career, basically anything and everything that he's done in life, and why he got on this journey of acting. Uh, not a lot of people know it started from a breakup. Yes. It started from a breakup. Thai food. A lot of things to do. And a breakup. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I really hope he went home and ate all of that Thai food. I, I do, too. Like, I do, too. And um, but it's, a, it's all getting excited. It's a seriously epic story about how this guy turned tragedy into epicness. So, yeah, you know. exactly, exactly. Overcame every single obstacle that was put in his way. And you guys are going to love this interview, especially the up-and-comers out there. Well, here he is. Kong Sim, welcome inside the crazy ant farm, man. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited to be on with you guys. Oh, man. We're excited to talk to you, too. So much going on. Dead to me, but just this amazing career that you've had, all of these amazing projects that you've been involved in, man. Plus, we want to talk a lot about you, about how you approach your work and, and, and life and just your general attitude, man. It's so inspiring and so upbeat. And I know the fans are going to love that. Awesome. Of course, of course. And but we like what we like to do at the beginning of each interview is introduce you to our listeners, tell them what you're about. Uh, how did you get started in the entertainment industry? Was it something you always wanted to do, or did you just kind of fall into it? Oh, I've been thinking about this question. <laughs> I, I listened to a couple of your podcasts. Um, where do I start? I, I grew up in Chicago, mm -hmm. and I wasn't an actor at all. And I was in, <laughs> I mean, we all are, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> but usually we don't have to audition for it. Sure. Anyway, so super condensed version of it was uh, I was in college down at the University of Chicago and uh, my dad got sick and I grew up in Chicago. And over the course of a couple of years, like he slowly progressed, got better, uh, got a liver transplanted better. Uh, then got worse after car accident. Anyway, so after I graduated, um, he ended up passing away and um, I was literally temping. I was working in a temp agency in First Chicago Bank. I was just placeholder in life. I, I didn't know what I was doing. My uh, lovely college uh, girlfriend at the time, I was kind of living with her. And I'm, I, my memory is I, I never did anything bad, but I probably wasn't the most uplifting boyfriend to be with. And um, <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, at some point, um, she moved to a, a new building and uh, I wasn't there to help her move and i came by with her i think it was like local tuesday thai food pennies thai food and uh i rang the buzzer and she answered and i said i have uh the thai food and she said i think we need to take a break and oh. i said <laughs> i said you mean from thai food <laughs> <laughs> right like <laughs> I, I i think we need to take a break i'm like are you breaking up with me over the intercom she's like yeah oh, I go, damn. oh okay wow so uh she didn't get any of the Thai food. No, that's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a silver lining. But anyway, flash forward, it was, you know, I, I didn't have a lot. Of, I didn't cultivate a lot of friends. And when my dad passed, I felt like no one understood. No one knew. It was just me and my mom struggling. Uh, and then uh, so when my girlfriend broke up with me, I was like, oh, I have nobody. So I'm going to, you know what? I had seen some improv shows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some improv classes. And so that's how I started. I started taking improv classes uh, at an offshoot of Second City called Players Workshop. Mm. Uh, and I started doing some uh, straight plays and I, I auditioned for uh, a conservatory in New York some point down the line. I got in. My sister was already out in New York uh, as an artist. Um, and so, so I got in and I'm like, I gotta go. It's time to fly. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. all of our guests come on, and it's all about taking that leap. Like any opportunity you can, really, especially in the entertainment industry, if you have like an opportunity like that to take that leap to move forward to like kind of pursue your dreams. Like, I, yeah, definitely. And I, I can, um, I, I love that you say that because not a lot of people are afraid, or not a lot of people take that jump or take that leap. So, I mean, I, I'm super happy that you did. Because you're awesome. Always amazing oh, to thanks. me to hear how 
uh, you know, life will put you on a path. Yeah. You know, like completely unexpected, not even on the radar of something that you wanted to do. And then life happens and kind of guides you there. That's always, uh, it's always amazing to me to hear how people get where they're going. I know. There's, there's so many, you know, you look back at a handful of decisions in your life that like, oh, sh- yeah. I went a different way. Mm-hmm. My life would be very different. So. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. she could have let you up with the Thai food, and we'd never know who I'd you are. I'd never know. I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure glad that didn't happen. I, mean, you know. I know. I know. Uh, that's funny. But uh, then you made the move to New York, and it's only rite of passage for actors who move to New York. They get a spot on Law and Order, oh, any exactly. one of the Law and Order shows. <laughs> and I mean, you were oh on a God. couple of them, right? Yeah, yeah. I have so many stories. I mean, listen, there are a handful of actors that I know that that have auditioned for a law and order have never gotten on so that no, no, no nicks on them. It just sometimes doesn't happen. But right. yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I have so many stories that I'm old, but <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you're good. The, the first time I booked law and order was, uh, it was one of these, they're, they're casting out of Chelsea Piers, and it was like a Thursday evening. It was, we used to call it five and unders. Um, I just had two lines mm. and we all know law and orders, the start of the show, uh, something happens you, you're following the stuff and then it leads to a dead body and right. then and then the tra- uh, the teaser uh or the the intro to the the show and so this was for a character named chinese delivery guy <laughs> and so five and underline and I'll, I'll paint the sides for you so i i go in and uh there are five other asian dudes like variations of me and uh all the producers are there it's end of the day they're tired and i go in and so the scene is Delivery guy comes and knocks on a door of an apartment building. The guy opens the door. He's a uh, he's a white guy. He takes the food. Looks in the bag of the food. He's like, "Oh, hey, oh, hey, where's where, where are my egg rolls? The free egg rolls with a uh, with a minimum purchase." I said, first line with an Asian accent, "No egg rolls." No. He's, like, <laughs> he's like, "No egg rolls. I ordered over thirty dollars worth of food. Here. I'm supposed to get my egg rolls. Where are they?" Second line, same as the first. A little bit more irritated. No egg rolls. That's it. No egg rolls. No egg rolls. Boom. That's the whole audition. The, the, <laughs> the wife comes. <laughs> it's great. The wife comes and she's like, she gives me the money. She's like, honey, I, I, I'm worried about your cholesterol. I don't want you to have any egg rolls. Thank you very much. Gives me the money. I leave. That's it. No egg rolls. No egg rolls. I, as delivery guys tend to do, they have extra uh, restaurant menus. Sure. They're putting it in, in other apartment door jams and under doors. I'm doing the same thing. I get to one door, slightly ajar. I, I put the menu in. The door opens. Dead body and mm. the teaser, right? Or Ooh. end of the opening, cold open. And so that was it. No egg rolls, no egg rolls. I'm like, I got to do something different. Right. Got to do something different. So back in those days, we all used to carry actual hard copy headshots and resumes. Right. And um, so I had some spare resumes. I trifolded it like a menu. I do the audition. All the producers are tired. They're not really paying attention. And uh, casting director was like, thank you very much. I said, thank you. I walk out. Right after I close the door, I, I slip one of the extra resumes, trifolded under the door as if it was the menu. <laughs> 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 nice. And I think nothing of it. 30 seconds later, I hear just a guffaw laughters. And I think it was Gail Keller. She comes out. She's smiling. She's like, nice job. And uh, that's that's how I booked it. The other dudes are like, what did, what did he do? <laughs> you know? So... Sometimes you got to get a little creative. Exactly. And I mean, we talk about the audition process a lot with our guests. And I mean, it's just like, it's kind of, you have to be more than just the words on the page. You have to do something different, something that sticks out, especially like you, like you did to make the, uh, everybody laugh. And so I just think that's great. I mean, that just shows your personality and, uh, shows that how much you wanted to be in it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, you know, the, the, the caveat is like, don't, it, it can, you, you, you don't want to like be inappropriate, right? Like right. you don't want to scare people or right. I, I have a lot of, I hear a lot of stories about that from the casting side. Um, I mean, I think the main thing is just, just going as yourself. Like mm-hmm. if you can come in with an attitude, I think that was helpful for me to hear of like, you already booked it. So this is the first read, you know, Absolutely. this is your take on it. You're Absolutely. not trying to do it right. You're not trying to be a good actor. You're just, you're, you're going to take care of them. And and this is, this is like your first 
Right? You do, it's, you a, it's a brilliant read. move with the paper slid under the door. It's not like you went in there and said, I have an idea. Let's rewrite this. I knock on the door right. and the girlfriend <laughs> breaks up with me. <laughs> and I'm like, out of here. You know, <laughs> you could have totally just done real life. It would have been like a great, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Sense memory stuff. That's Sense right. Memory. That's right. I'm just a method acting. I'm bringing a little <laughs> realism right, right. to the role. <laughs> that's right. Um, we didn't need the Chinese delivery guy to be crying. So, that's um, right. like, thank ooh. you very much. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. It is kind of funny though that that type of a situation led to that type of a situation or a role. That's that's hilarious <laughs> to me. I mean, right, right. Yeah, luckily, it worked out better for a Chinese delivery guy. I mean, right. You know. Yeah, yeah. I do need to find my my uh, college sweetheart and uh, and just kind of deliver like just send her the best Thai food. Right. That I think right. That- <laughs> Thanks. If only, Thanks if, for... <laughs> it's true. If only you had stuck maybe the menu under the door, everything could have. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Uh, oh man, that's so great. That's so great. And I mean, we also see that um, you dabbled a little bit in theater. What was that like, especially being in New York? Yeah, theater was my first love. Um, improv is my first love. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I went to a conservatory called National Shakespeare Conservatory. Mm. It doesn't exist anymore. And it was kind of great because it, they introduced uh, Shakespeare, which everything is on the text, and then uh, Chekhov, which has a lot of subtext. Right. And the teachers were great. We, we it was a two-year conservatory. One year into it, they, they closed their doors um, uh, the administration uh, didn't do something right. And so the silver lining was we had one year of training and then all our student loans were forgiven. Yeah. So the tongue in cheek joke about that was like, you know, I've, I've always looked for uh, training programs that have shoddy financial records. Mm. You know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you get some free classes. Uh, that's it. They shutter their doors. It's not your fault. It's like, all right. <laughs> um, but that was, that was a good intro into it. And uh, uh, I, I remember, I would just, as everyone there, we were just doing theater for free. You'd still have to audition for stuff backstage or right. whatever. And uh, just doing, it was great. I mean, it was it's an exciting time to be there in that stage in your life when you're young and single and, you know, you, just, you have all the time in the world, you uh-huh. think. And, and um, so I did, I did a lot of stuff. Uh, one of my big breakthroughs was like for like, I think four or five years, I could not get an agent because I didn't come from a name school. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, you know, a model. Uh, so I would get the breakdowns illegally, like a lot of people used to do, maybe still do. And uh, I would submit for everything. And I got an audition for a new musical at the Public Theater, directed by George Wolfe. And I went in, I submitted myself, I went in, I had nothing to lose. It was um, a musical called Radiant Baby. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's uh, based on the life of Keith Haring, mm. the kind of 80s pop, pop, um, pop artist. Yeah. Um, and I went in, I had, I had nothing to lose. It was the lovely thing about youth. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to do my thing. I'm going to have fun. Um, and then lo and behold, I ended up, uh, getting the musical. Nice. Uh, yeah. And do you, did you find the transition away from theater and into film and television difficult? I know a lot of people say that when they come from that theater background and you have to project yourself so much and you're putting yourself out there and you're, you're, you're playing to the back of the theater, you know, when you get in the front of camera and it's, it's all camera stuff, they, they find it hard to tone it down a little bit. Did you find that transition that way or what? A hundred percent. I wish, I wish somebody had taught me how to audition for a smaller uh, or, or well, you know, for film and TV for the camera, because I'm sure I blew a lot of auditions because I just didn't know that I was just being way too big. Mm-hmm. So I think as much as, especially for your uh, listeners who are starting out, but even still, like as much as you could be on the other side of the camera and watch people do their stuff, if you could, for example, like volunteer to be a reader for a casting director, right? That is like one of the best educations you can have because you see how what people do. And how they come in. Um, but yeah, 100%. You, you have to, um, the bare bones of this stuff is still the same in terms of, you know, doing your homework on, on, on the scene. What genre is it? Um, knowing what your role is. Are you a co-star, guest star, series regular? Uh, we can go into the minutia of that. You know, right, like right. There's still the, the left brain homework stuff. Like, am I being genre appropriate? Uh, am I, you know, if it's a multicam, am I, and I'm a co-star, am I setting up the... The, the jokes for for the, the lead um but yeah it, it definitely is less is more for for uh, film and tv definitely is and oftentimes 
it's just trusting that if you've done the homework and you're just living the scene, hopefully not pre-planning it too much right. um, moments, just just be you in the scene, having done all the good homework and, and just let it let it ski and let it flow. Um, and you could surprise yourself, you know, um, but yeah, oftentimes just having the thoughts or is, is, is enough. Definitely. 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 And I mean, yeah. you shine on like episodic pieces and film pieces because I mean, we see that the last airbender and Olympus has fallen, but definitely in television. I mean, we got huge names like Grey's Anatomy. Of course, your role in Dead to Me, Better Call Saul, uh, Scorpion. We have a huge, massive fan base <laughs> of Scorpion fans. So, I mean, they're going to be super excited to hear about that. But do you like the. Uh, filming for television more than film or like which one do you prefer it kind of depends yeah. uh when you get to go on a film and you get to go to like shreveport louisiana for like olympus has fallen and, and you get to be away from your wife and kid and all the responsibilities and when you're on a film set it can be kind of like being a kid again at summer school um it's 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 a lot of fun it's also fun to fly to new places for gigs mm, yeah um it's also uh, very stressful. So yeah, it, it depends on how demanding the, the role is. Um, right. Uh, you know, I, I kind of say as in everything, I mean, if, if you're putting your all into it, it's, everything's kind of costing you. Yeah. So, um, but it's a good way to spend yourself, right? Spend your energy, spend your being just, you know, investing in, in something. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. then on the flip side, episodic television and having, especially if you get on and you're, you're a recurring character or a guest star, you know, you've got that steady paycheck, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, uh, luckily I've had one series and, you know, there are people who've booked pilots after pilots just to have none of the pilots go. And, right. and you know, my first go around was with, um, so it was a hospital drama by David E. Kelly called Monday Mornings. Right, right. And that was lovely. I mean, what what a great ensemble. Um, yeah, Ving Rhames, uh, Jamie Bamber, um, Alfred Alfred Molina, and then like David E. Kelly was helming it. Um, and it was a book, uh, it was an adaptation of uh, Sanjay, Dr. Sanjay Gupta book. Um, and, and that he, was lovely. Yeah. You know, in terms of everything was lovely. You know, it's you're treated well, you you make more money than you've ever seen you know it's it's uh that's nice especially in an industry where sometimes you have to go extended periods of time without you know a paycheck you know and you got to rely on those residuals or or, or yeah. a steady paycheck it's always good to have that kind of a gig yeah for sure i mean you know there's a lot of things to be said um some of my favorite acting teachers have come to a realization that one has said you know the, the kind of the way to stay sane in this business because of the so much is out of your hands in terms of a steady paycheck is if you could somehow divorce um, the need to book right <laughs> from the, the craft to a certain extent um, you're probably going to be healthier and so that what that realistically means obviously is that do you have a reliable other gig you know whether it's waiting tables or you know temping or whatever you do to, to kind of just make ends meet that's um, it. Yeah, that's that's the reality of it. It's when the money is good, it's great. But I, I kind of liken it to being like a, in the animal kingdom, we're kind of like prey animals. Like yeah, <laughs> may, maybe one out of eight attempts will 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 get some kill. But you know, we're not grazing animals, right? So. That's it. Exactly, man. Exactly. But I mean, let's talk about the biggie because I mean, this one is just absolutely it's a crazy premise that I've ever honestly never like experienced or watched on television or stream or anything like that dead to me. Uh, yeah. at that one, you got some deep stuff, especially when like in the first season where they go on the retreat and you connect with Christina Applegate's character, who is kind of like the more there's walls up, like even though her husband just died, like she is not letting anybody into her home and instead of mm -hmm. like a uh, Lindy, Linda Cardellini's uh, character there. But like you got in there, man, you were like, <laughs> you, you made the ama uh, emotional yeah. breakthrough, like. Go you. Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I'm, I just feel so lucky to have been part of that ride. Um, you know, um, the showrunner um, Liz Feldman. She's a very, you know, accomplished writer and, and other things. And when we talked about it. She she said in another interview, like she went into CBS, kind of talking about more her stuff. Um, and it was later in the pitch season, and she pitched another show. 
a different show. And they're like, that's great. What else do you have? And I think it's okay to say like, she, she was going through some personal stuff. I think she and her partner were trying to have a baby. And so they're going through all this infertility issues and Mm -hmm. miscarriages and all this stuff. And so she pivoted and sold dead to me kind of based on her life experiences. And they're like, great, let's write it up and see what happens. And so that, that's kind of where the genesis of that, the idea came from. When I came on and I read the pilot, um, and I, I had to audition for it. Um, it's one of these roles I love to book because it was non, uh, you know, ethnicity specific. Uh-huh. Right. Pastor Wayne in his fifties, obvious, uh, Bad toupee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this was a description. Is that actual character description? That's that's <laughs> it, hilarious. Uh, this is how I remember it. Obvious <laughs> bad toupee. He runs the grief counseling group. Um, he also, which didn't come out, but he also comes out as gay to no one's surprise. Um, that storyline didn't come out, and uh, so I was like, okay, so is there some comedy here? And it's a single cam, so. You know, still good acting, but still, still, there are moments uh, where it can be funny. And uh, we did the audition, and then I, I, I booked it, and I was happy. And we're down in San Pedro at the first week, uh, everyone's meeting. And I had always had a huge crush with Linda Cardellini. Freak, <laughs> I'm freaks right there with you, don't we all? Yeah, oh, yeah, you know? freaks and geeks and Vilma, and I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you know, getting to watch her work and and everybody else, and then finding the show in the first season. You know, oftentimes shows you're like, I'm not quite sure what this show's about, and they kind of have to find the, themselves and find the show. Absolutely. Um, but you know, I'm just I'm just really grateful to be part of that ride. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I totally relate to that because Logan and my daughter introduced me to the show, and one once I watched it, you know, one two episodes in, you're hooked. It's just like he said, something that you've never seen before, and it's original, and and it's it's out there, and yeah, it's damn entertaining to watch for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you say is your favorite moment or favorite scene you had to record while doing the show? Favorite scene? I bet there's so many though. I mean, it, it's, yeah. I bet it's really hard to pick one. Yeah, there's so many. Um... I don't, it's so funny. My mind goes to the scenes that I must up in. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of cautionary tales. Um, sure. Do you uh, do you bring your improv into it a lot, or, or do you have the freedom to kind of do that a little bit on set? Um, yeah, I if I can, I, I will. Um, I love it when I can do that, and I love it when when they do that. You know, the it, it really depends on on what the tone of the show is, and, and whether that's they're kind of open to that. Right. Absolutely. Um, to me, to me, always the danger of improv on, on set is um, when people are just trying to be funny for the sake of being funny and it's not like character driven. Yeah. I, I think that could be kind of annoying. Definitely. Um, like if it's coming from, I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you eons ago, I, this was an improvised moment unplanned. I did a little indie film called um, flying scissors it was a, a pseudo pseudo mockumentary about the competitive world of rock paper scissor mm. competitions. Oh. <laughs> right? Okay. Cool idea. And, right. Um, on the first day of the set, or shoot, we um, uh, it was just establishing shot, uh, us entering the, whatever the hotel for all the competitors to meet, and uh, they're like, "All right, you're gonna be on a cell phone talking, and and you kind of upset, blah blah blah." And uh, so uh, I think the second ad gave me his cell phone Mm -hmm. and uh i got so into being upset in the shot i actually slammed the phone down on the ground (laughs) thankfully it it, the pieces popped back up into frame yeah (laughs) so that's the take they they use Uh, (laughs) don't do that yeah destroy prop yeah and and thankfully I, i guess i didn't destroy the 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 thing but um I'll tell you a different story. On Olympus Has Fallen, I have so many stories about that. Oh, no, that's great. That movie, because, you know, it's it's Anton Fuqua, it's Gerard Butler, it's Melissa Leo, it's Morgan Freeman. Hell yeah. You know, it is, it is like the dream scenario to be on. Absolutely. And um, there was a moment where, uh, if you'd seen the film, basically I play the South Korean uh, prime minister, mm-hmm. and I go to the White House and with, with my bodyguards, and unbeknownst to to me, if anyone hasn't seen the movie, um, my bodyguards are the bad guys. Yeah, yep. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't clear uh, when we went down to the bunker uh, that I wasn't part of them. I, it wasn't clear in the script. So Anton was cool enough 
the director was cool enough to like, hey, can we improvise something? Because right now there's nothing that indicates that I knew about it. Right. And I didn't know about it. So he allowed us to improvise something. And it was cool because I think probably from this is a big game day thing, you know, we improvised some emotional stuff that was cut on the cutting room floor. Um, we also improvised something. This is more of a cautionary tale. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I have a lot of them. No, no uh, that's so, what we need, though. Because we, uh, exactly. we do have a lot of up-and-comers <laughs> okay. trying to bust in. So cautionary tales are always yeah. valuable. So maybe the lesson of this is sometimes safety should dictate how much you're willing to do stuff. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that's a good setup so, right there. So Dylan McDermott, he, he also played like a, a U.S politician kind of secret service guy but he's a bad guy right he's a turncoat so we had we improvised something where we didn't have you know stunt doubles for me or for him so <laughs> so we just technically needed him to somehow knock me down and i needed to hit a certain mark so he's like well why don't i slap you because that's insulting i'm like that sounds great <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> we, <laughs> we 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 know how to do like you know a fake stage slap right sure so we let's practice it we'll go slow the 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 lead stunt guy i forgot his name he's a lovely guy he's ex navy seal he's 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 helping us choreograph it all right so you're gonna slap me and i'm gonna end up over there okay great great we'll do it let's practice it slow a few times hit your mark slap boom there great now let's got it look can we do it it's like yeah let's do it and uh they're like is it okay are you cool with um him actually still and actually slapping you i'm like yeah <laughs> let's do it <laughs> so the first take the master shot the first take he comes he slaps me i i hit my mark um the uh, stunt choreographer is all pumped up he's like yeah 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 Kong, that's my boy yeah great great they love it that one's in the can let's do another one for safety the second one or the third one uh something went awry uh-oh so dylan accidentally cupped my ear mm. when he slapped me and so my eardrum ruptured oh and you know instantly if you've ever had your eardrum rupture you're just you're hearing yeah. and there's this pain <laughs> <laughs> and so i finished the scene the yell cut and i'm like hey i think i think something uh, happened to my ear and so i ruptured my eardrum but they were able to use, I think, one of those earlier oh. takes. Oh. Damn. I, I just love the, yeah, are you okay with him actually slapping you? Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like, like dedication. That's commitment. <laughs> yeah, that's real so commitment to the role. Maybe be okay with not getting actually slapped. That's, right. Him, <laughs> that's right. That is a t-shirt, Eight. though. I want that t-shirt. Slap, you know, <laughs> slap, boom, hit your mark. Like, I, I well, mean, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I could I could send you guys the 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 silly pics that we took after that happened with Dylan Dylan slapping me. Oh my gosh, that would be great! So, yeah, um, <laughs> oh I don't goodness. think he remembers that, but I, I definitely remember it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, safety first. Yeah, always, man, always. But uh, what we like to do at the end of every interview is have our guests leave the up and comers with a little piece of advice on how to break into the industry or what do you think is the most important thing at the moment to help them get noticed and what pitfalls would you say to try to avoid? There's so many. Um, right. <laughs> and I listen to some of your good past guests. Um, you know, it's something that a lot of people say. Um, it's a craft, right? It's a uh-huh. discipline. So, right. so, so learn learn the discipline ideally spend every day doing the discipline if you were an athlete you'd be you'd be doing the basics every day it's the 10,000 hours um learn learn how to audition well uh, to act well um find good teachers um mm, i like that and i've had a lot of teachers i tend to like teachers in general who aren't so ego based mm-hmm. right who who aren't like i'm the guru and i have all the answers and all the other techniques and teachers suck I tend to avoid that that mm-hmm. person, but do try to find some place that feels safe and nurturing, um, and find a teacher that kind of believes in you, um, because you're you're very tender and you know you're you're everyone. It's all the cliches. You're a completely unique person. You're going to bring whatever life experiences you bring. So you want to be in a nurturing environment where where you could just learn to play and gently be called on if you're acting or if if, if it feels like. You know, you're 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 not just being genuine. Um, Absolutely, it's a uh, it's the weird thing for whoever gets into this profession, whether you're clinically a narcissist, which this business has plenty of. Like, there's something drawing you to it, and 
you know, you have one life. Maybe there's another life, but pretty sure this is the one life you for sure have. So if, if you want to pursue acting, make the sacrifices that you need to do to, to make it a priority. Also realizing that you also need to, if you want a, a certain level of um, basic necessity needs, also know that if you're going to do it, there's no timeline necessarily. There, there should be an urgency, but it's the urgency of doing the work day to day that you would do for any other profession or any other craft. Mm, I really and, like um, that. Yeah. And, I, you know, uh, I, back in the days, you can get an amazing education just watching the um, director's commentary and the actor's commentary on movies, on DVDs and stuff. Like, that's super invaluable. Uh, what, listening to people in the process um, well, and that kind but, of takes it all the way back to what you said about volunteering to be a reader in auditions. Yeah. I mean, I love the fact that you're pointing out, educate yourself, any opportunity you have to learn and educate yourself. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, really, it's just treat it, treat it like as if you're getting paid for it. And because I, I, I'll be honest, you know, when I started off, I'm just not a character actor. I'm not a, a, a leading actor. You know, you, you stick with this long enough. You, you put in the good work as with anything. You're going to get your opportunities. Mm. Ideally, you can create your own opportunities. So I know I'm sure other guests have talked about don't wait for people to give you permission. Right. You know, S Stallone didn't do it. No, nobody did it. You know, it's it's uh, Spielberg. Like you just it's almost like the uh, Werner uh, Herzog thing of like it's easier with guerrilla filmmaking and also with all the arts. It's easier to um, apologize for having done something than to ask for permission. Absolutely. So be bold. And, and, and when you're starting out doing stuff, creating stuff, do stuff that speaks to your heart and maybe is fun too, you know? Um, there's so many shoulds with everything that we do, but but if you could kind of find your voice as a uh, somebody who creates content, whether that's short films or music or whatever, do stuff that, that kind of keeps you playful and, and happy because this this business is as everybody knows they don't care nobody nobody really it, it's a kind of a competitive heartless business on some level it is but at the same time if you make a voice if you follow the duplass brothers or whatever like in people who've just made their own shit happen you're more likely going to get opportunities coming your way and and from the acting point of view you stick with it long enough it's not always about who's the most talented it's kind of the people who persevere and the people who persevere tend to be able to adapt and, and know themselves and know that they're in it for the long haul mm. and, you know, be, be nice to everybody. Uh, you know, the whole humility thing, like, cause you never know who's going to be in a position of power, but also just, just treat people the way you want to be treated. That's um, it. You know, and that's, that's all of life too. Right. And, and ideally you want to look at the end of your life and if you can look back at it and be like, you know, like you didn't have regrets, for things you didn't do or try when you were younger or whatever age, you know, you still have whatever life you have. So, so be bold, do something a little scary, uh, do something that's fun, work with your friends or other people. Love and, that. uh, yeah, who knows where life will lead you. Yes. I can't agree more, man. Uh, listen, thank you so much for taking a little time out of your day and coming getting a little crazy with us and just passing on the knowledge to the up and comers. Because like I said, I think, a lot of up-and-comers are really going to benefit from this interview and take a lot from it because it's honestly inspiring to see where you came from and how it all happened and where you are now because, like I said, I mean, you're a truly passionate individual about what you do and you fully put 100% of yourself into your craft. So I really, really respect that. Oh, thanks a lot, guys. And I can tell you guys love what you do and you, you guys put yourself into Oh, thank you. Oh, we really appreciate podcast. that. So uh, lastly, yeah, tell everybody where they can find you because we want everybody to follow you for sure. Um, I mean, I have a website, kongsim.com, K-E-O-N-G-S-I-M. Um, I do do some some uh, coaching with acting, but it's just very sparse because I have a, a toddler. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, some plugs. I have a couple movies that we did last year that I'm excited about. One was a, a Ron Howard film. Um, yeah, it's uh, called Billy Elegy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a huge slew of stories from that. Just lovely being part of that film. Uh, my guess is, and I'm not, I don't think I'll jinx it, but I'm, I, I believe that Glenn Close will finally win Academy Award mm. for her role as Mama in the movie. Um, and there's a, an indie film with uh, that we also shot last summer uh, with Tate Taylor. Um, he did The Help, right. among other films. Right. We shot that in Mississippi. 
Um, that's a lovely film. Allison Janney is the lead. Uh, I get to, it was so lovely for me. I got to play a quote, bad guy. <laughs> uh, and, and my daughter was Aquafina. Oh yeah. She, she was awesome. And she's a psychopath and I'm a psychopath. It's lovely. It's, like I, never <laughs> it's got to, lovely. I, I never got to kill so many people in my <laughs> life. It was great. <laughs> We're going to have to have you back on when those hit so that we could talk about those. Cause oh, that's going to be for fantastic. Sure. For sure. I'd love to, man. I'd love to. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks guys. Thank I love what you. you guys do, man. Appreciate you, man. You have a good rest of the day now. Thanks. You too. Uh-huh. Bye-bye now. Just a very passionate individual about his craft. Like I said, I mean, he came so far from getting broken up with some Thai food. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, like if, the, if he goes on to win like an Academy Award, the idea that the, the career started over a breakup with Thai food yeah. is going to be an epic story, right? Yeah, I man. mean, <laughs> And so many stories. That's what I love when guests come on and tell stories just from set. Like you actually ruptured your eardrum while on set. Like that's insane. He still kept going. He's like, yeah, sure. That's the epitome of method acting, right? right? Like, oh, oh my oh. goodness. Thank you again, Kong Sim, for coming on the show. What? Did y'all see that? <laughs> what? If y'all don't know what we're talking about, it's the time for the top five segment. Yes. And uh, what we're talking about this week, brought to you by our podcast producer, Jason. Uh, shocking twist in film and or television. Mm. Damn. Damn. I, like, it was It was intense, man. It was intense. There was this was a, lot a of tough stuff. one. Every week it's tough. It really was. Like, but fun because it, it just makes you revisit all these epic shows and, t- and films. So. Exactly. Exactly. Well, honestly, honestly, my number one, five, I'm not sorry, number <laughs> one, my number five <clears throat> is The Usual Suspects. Mm. Just, this was such an epic film. Like, it was such a freaking thrill ride basically the whole entire time and you didn't know what the guy with the gimp was the motherfucker behind it all at the end <laughs> like seriously who like, is kaiser so sad. yeah like this motherfucker like did it all he did it all yes uh the disgraced kevin spacey but you know you know great film great film one of my all-time favorites yeah. i gotta be honest with you and one of the best slogan logline teasers ever, ever. Yeah. who is kaiser says there were buttons there were t-shirts it was everywhere yeah it was everywhere it was it, well done well done it's such a good one my number five more recent but uh still just like what the fuck get out yeah dude what Especially what? like internet phenomena, everybody was like, "This shit's real. This shit's real." I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. Okay. This entire racist town. You, you think killing black people, but like actually, just now the black people are in them. Some sort of transference, wicked, supernatural, crazy shit. Yeah. Like what yeah. the fuck? I don't think anybody saw it coming like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you thought it was a good murder mystery. You didn't know what was quite going on, but then what? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant, and I usually catch on to the plot points really quick. I'm usually, no, nope, I got this figured out. No. Yeah. No fucking clue. Yeah, seriously. Well done. Yeah. Well done. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Yeah. You'll, you'll be like, what the fuck? Hats off okay. to Jordan Peele. Definitely yes. one of my biggest favorite filmmakers right now. Like, oh, he's killing it right now. He's yeah. killing it. Yeah. Get out. Get out. And that means go watch it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. My number four goes to, this one was on my list a couple weeks ago, I believe, for the on-screen duos. I think that's what it was. Mm. Um, Fight Club, Tyler Durden. You know, motherfucker. Brad Pitt, one of my all-time favorite actors, y'all know, and then teaming up with Edward Norton. And I mean, did you guys know? They were one and the same. Mm. Damn near the same person. Mm. I mean, that's what happens when you're schizophrenic. But it's you know, true. you know, I mean, that was just such an epic movie because there was so much happening and you felt like these two characters were so different even though they like hung out together and were friends and shit. And you're like, oh, that's his alternate personality basically. And like, oh, it's just, it's insane to think about. And then especially not knowing about it until the very end where he basically has to shoot his mouth basically to kill tyler like yes so good man so good and two fucking phenomenal actors man brad pitt and edward norton definitely are amazing yeah i just want edward norton has got to be one of the seriously most or most underrated actors in hollywood and this guy just delivers freaking phenomenal performances yeah. in and out just like i feel like he has a bad rap he, like, uh, yeah you know i mean but he's he's like 
a perfectionist. Yeah. And so sometimes that comes across wrong or whatever. But you cannot deny the man's talent. Yeah, man. exactly. All right, I'm going to the TV side. And I hope I don't blow this for J. August Richards because I know he's been binge watching this. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're listening, but I'm about to blow it for you if you haven't finished it. The Americans. Yes. Another, like, I was just shocked. I love this sto- show from start to finish. Carrie Russell, Matthew Reason, just the phenomenal cast, everything involved with it. You guys know that they were Russians. They were over in America. They were Russian spies. They were trying to take down the Reagan administration and the government, uh, Cold War and everything. Um, FBI is on their trail, right? The FBI. The neighbor figures out who they are. You know, okay, you, you guys know the premise. The shocking twist at the end. He lets them go. The FBI agent picks friendship over country, lets them go. Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, Nobody saw this coming. They go back to Russia. They, they, they're done. They're over. The spy game's over. They're allowed to go back to Russia and reacclimate into Russia. Here's more surprise. The daughter stays. Mm. What? Like, the huh? daughter stays. She doesn't go with them. She gets off the train and goes back because the, the son stayed also. But he had to stay. He was going to stay with the FBI agent. But then the daughter unexpectedly. But the whole shocking twist is after all this time, after the rundown, the chase, the hunt, he lets them go. It's he lets them go. It was... It was I mean, just so many amazing people on that show. Yeah. Just unbelievable. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Brilliant show. But I blew the ending for you. Boom! <laughs> right there. Right there. What? It's shocking twist. We have to tell you the shocking twist. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Uh, my number three goes to, most recently, one of the best, I think, thrill rides trying to figure it out. Um, definitely a fucking slap you to all the Star Wars fans. Um, mm. Knives Out. Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. So damn good. Daniel Craig, like, in that southern accent was hilarious. It really uh, was. I mean, you couldn't take that shit seriously. No. But, no. and I mean, Chris Evans, you got so many great actors in this freaking project that were just killing it the whole time. And you're basically like, who killed this old man? Who did it? Who did sure. it? But then who also was trying to take the money at the end? Who was it? Like, it's a twist and turn. Every single, like... Thing that you think you figured out it's actually something different so yes definitely a really good movie if you haven't seen knives out check it out guys it's really freaking good how good was it it was good enough to get ben affleck's girlfriend off the bike long enough to film it you know it was <laughs> you know <laughs> you know just saying it's that good um my, my number three i'm gonna go back to film now it's now you see me oh so good. oh my gosh man mark ruffalo and woody harrelson morgan <sighs> freeman just like unbelievably awesome yeah, man. at the magician you think you know what's going on but it's all a sleight of hand card trick from get go mark ruffalo is a genius so good. he's a genius did you figure it out did you know it was ruffalo no you didn't yeah know especially ruffalo. eisenberg who like always portrays the genius, genius type right? and then he's like what i mean and you got uh dave franco like yeah this is such a good cast guys. and the second like, one was brilliant apparently they're coming out with a third one so um by the way I, I read something the other day that did you know that the sequel was supposed to be called now you don't <laughs> instead of now you see me <laughs> That's uh, funny. you know yeah now you see me too or whatever the name of the sequel was it was supposed to be according to the creator now you don't yeah so it would have been now you see me now you don't that's funny. anyway little piece of trivia there go check that one out it's a really cool twist and turn so good so good my number two goes to another one that just came out a uh, year or two, maybe three years ago. Um, a Simple Favor. So good. I saw it twice in the theater. Um, Anna Kendrick, Blake Lively, and so many others. Like You're basically like, where did this girl go? She basically disappeared. And I mean, you thought she died. You thought she like killed somebody. Um, but it's so freaking good. Blake Lively is mm. just an amazing actor. And so is Anna Kendrick. Like Everybody attached to this project was so damn good. If you haven't seen A Simple Favor, be sure to check it out. It's amazing. It uh, Like, seriously. And it, it is one of those movies where you think you got it figured out, but then you don't. No. It, and, you know, you because whenever you think you have something figured out, you don't. No. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm going back to TV now. And for anybody who's a fan of Jennifer Garner, you know you watch this show. If you're a fan <laughs> of J.J. Abrams, you know you watch this show. I'm talking about Alias and the oh shit moment. When she found out SD6, the CIA wasn't the CIA after all. The whole time Sydney thought she was working as a double agent for the CIA to take down. But the CIA, the organization that she was working for that she thought was the CIA was actually another organization, an evil organization called SD6. Mm. And everybody she thought was good 
was also working for SD6. So then you had to question, are they bad guys? Are they good guys? Right. We don't know. Mom and dad are spies. Was One's a Russian spy. One's an American spy. Are they SD6? Are they CIA? We don't know. That twist plot point ruined everything for everybody. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck is going on? Kevin Weissman. I mean, Victor Garber. Matthew Vaughn. Jennifer. Just the, so many. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper started in that <laughs> shit season one. Did you know that? That's right. Alias. Go watch it. And now, yeah, SD6. It's not what you think. It's not what it's you not think. It's not what you think. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the whole show has led up to this point mm. right here. Number one. For me, oh, I am your father. Because he does not say Luke. He does not say Luke. He doesn't. Empire Strikes Back, episode five of Star Wars. Oh my goodness. Nobody saw that shit coming. Mm. He was so freaking surprised. Luke didn't know what the fuck was happening. And I mean, you guys know I'm a huge freaking Star Wars fan. So for this to be revealed was just an amazing thing. An amazing thing. I'm a part of all these Star Wars groups. And I love that they share all this shit on uh, Facebook. It's really good. But everybody loves that. Everybody thinks our a lot of people think that this is the best one ever. Empire is the best one ever. I personally think Return of the Jedi is the best one ever. But Me too. the original trilogy is always, in my opinion, going to be the best. Yes. So, so Empire Strikes Back, my number one. Mm. It's it's a brilliant one. It I is. mean, that reveal was yeah, that and Luke finding out he made out with his sister. Yeah, that's that gross. they were actually brother and sister. I mean, yeah. Mark Hamill, poor guy. He had to go through some shit in the Star Wars trilogy. That's all I'm saying. He did. That's all. I'm saying. Good pick, man. Good pick. All right, I'm bed. I'm back to uh, Ed Norton yeah. because the guy, as we said, is brilliant. My number one primal fear Mm. it's one of the most epic court dramas you know mystery thrillers that i have ever seen ed norton basically plays this like uh choir boy altar boy at a church and he's accused of killing a catholic priest um richard Gere is the lawyer and richard Gere is you know takes on the case and the whole thing is is that ed norton's character is like he's got a split personality and he's a, he's he's very stuttery and he's and he's got a learning disability and he, he doesn't talk well and he's very shy and he's to himself and everything and then this other guy is the like fucking psychopath yeah. who he says killed the priest because he was molesting mm. him and so this other personality steps forward to take control and, and keep him safe basically so killing him and everything and you go back and forth and you do all these things but the entire time gear is being played because the actual personality and control is not the weak stuttery kid it's the fucking psychopath and he made up the weak stuttery kid as a way to get through the whole i mean i never saw it coming and the way that ed norton was able to bounce back and forth between the two personalities was scary fucking good yeah scary good if you haven't seen this one so i probably other than pretty woman my favorite role of richard gear by far um and ed norton just levels high levels so high. damn good go see it man it's definitely go see it like, like you find it somewhere yeah, go find see it, it. <laughs> exactly exactly oh my goodness be sure to leave a comment below if you're watching the video if you're listening to us on any podcast platforms because we want to know your top five shocking twists in film or television <gasps> yeah like there's so many good ones out there but we only got five selections so you know, right. you know uh if you're doing the youtube things do the youtube things make sure to ring that bell subscribe do all that good shit if you're listening on on the podcast uh be sure to give us a review down below and uh give us some stars all that good shit recommend Mm -hmm. us uh all that good stuff but great top five segment man great top five segment can't wait till next week yeah who who knows who knows what it's gonna be seriously seriously oh man so i mean you know new mutants did okay it did okay yeah, yeah. last week. Uh, bo- we're going over to box office recap. And, I mean, you know, I predicted around like 7 to 10 because it's it's very interesting right now. We mm. really don't know what's going to happen from week to week. But uh, there are some high expectations for Tenet. Tenet finally is coming out this week, so but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, like I said, uh, 7 to 10 for New Mutants. It came out with... Uh, 
seven million. Uh, yeah, so yeah, did yeah. good things. Did good things. Uh, Unhinged came in second place, and I got I did two to three million, and it did two point six. So right there in the good spot. Uh, Bill and Ted was number three uh, with a number around. I think it was around like one point five million. Mm. And I mean, you know, uh, SpongeBob was also on there, and uh, the personal history of David Copperfield did some good things as well and which i never saw any promotion about this so no I'm, me either. i'm gonna have to look into that one so i'm pretty excited about that uh but new movies that are coming out this week like i said tenet tenet is finally hitting the theaters guys i know a lot of people are super super pumped about that i know christopher nolan's pumped about that <laughs> finally i know right um and in select theaters you got like rocket hunter the second uh the owners and i am woman and movies you can still go out and see. Yeah, no idea. Movies you can still go out and see are The 800, Spider-Man Far From Home, Dirty Dancing, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Cutthroat City, Unhinged, and New Mutants. Almost uh, all of those at drive-ins. Yeah. Yeah, in case you were wondering, like, how the fuck can I see all those? Most of those are at drive-ins. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. Well, number one, I think, is definitely going to be Tenet. Uh, they, like I said, they got some high expectations. They're thinking around $25 million. I'm a little on the edge about that one, so I'm right? go, I'm going uh, with around fifteen to twenty, fifteen to twenty, because this is a much anticipated one. Uh, number two, I think it's going to be New Mutant with a round like mm, two to five, maybe, uh, maybe around like four, three. In that range, it's not going to be anything crazy. Uh, Unhinged, I think, is going to be around like one to two. Bill and Ted face the music. I think it's going to be below a million. And the same with uh, the David Copperfield movie. I think it's going to be below a million. So we'll see, guys. We'll see. But, I mean, go to the theaters, go to the drive-ins, and finally freaking see Tenet. Because, I mean, a lot of people have been waiting on that one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Yeah, but, I mean, now it is time for the IMDb Pro Top Trending segment. Oh, you guys know we love this freaking app. I mean, we use it every single week for more than just the podcast. I'm sure everyone knows we are a film and television production company, and we make sure to go back and post casting notices because, you know, we're trying to get some people cast for our short film that we got coming out. A lot of good things happening here at Crazy Ant Media. But, you know, I mean, you can also track the latest industry news, box office predictions, your favorite actor, and so much more. Um, You can go ahead and do it because my phone is loading. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the number one trending movie this week, by no surprise, the Batman. Mm. And it has nothing to do with the new shutdown. It, I mean, it blew it away. I think everybody was expecting it. it was All the talk was Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? Then that The Batman trailer hit. Everybody's like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah it, I mean, I, it, I think it stole DC fandom. And so it's no surprise to me it's number one. Yeah. I, and from what I see, I mean, everybody... They like the take. Yeah. They like the look. They like it. So I, I'm not at all surprised by this one. Right, um, right. And the top trending TV show is by no surprise that it's there. It's Lucifer because we talked about it last yes. week. That freaking broke so many records. Is Netflix's hot big thing right now. So, so damn sense. good. So damn good. Watch it. <laughs> and the top trending star goes to the one and only Chadwick Boseman. Yes, yeah. of course. Of and course. Uh, um. Unfortunately, for all the wrong reasons, but uh, man deserves to be there. And um, it's still, I, I don't know even how to say or no. address that. It's just devastating. It's super sad, man. It's super sad. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in and getting a little crazy with us on episode 128. Oh, on Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Thank you again for voting for us on Podcast Magazine for the month of September. You can go ahead and vote for us on the month of October. We have the link in our Instagram bio. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Be sure to follow each and every one of us on social media and... uh, Visit Kyung Sim's website, uh, kyungsim.com, I believe. Uh, thank you again for him coming on the show and talking about Dead to Me and his career and all the amazing things. Yes. Um, but you guys know you can follow us at Crazy Ant Media, at ItCap Podcast, and myself at JLo Fantastic and Crazy Ant Guy 1970. That's right. And you guys know you can subscribe to this podcast anywhere you listen to your podcasts Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spodbean, Stitcher, all those good 
places. And if you are watching this video on YouTube, we appreciate you. Be sure to like that video, subscribe, ring the bell, and do all those amazing YouTube things so you can stay up to date with everything we are doing here yes. at Crazy Ant Media. And it's a lot. And it's a lot. It is. It really is. And be sure to visit our website, crazyantmedia.com, where you can start rocking the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. You got the shirts. You got the hats. You got bags. You got all these amazing things that we know that you love. So just head over to the website and do those amazing things because we appreciate you and we appreciate everybody for listening each and every week. Yes. Um, but I got to say. I gotta say, uh, my favorite part to talk about today in the industry news segment was Disney and Netflix. Disney had a lot of good stuff with like uh, The Mandalorian coming back. Mm. Super excited about mm -hmm. that. I mean, I talk about it all the time that the streamers don't put out original content quick enough, and Disney Plus is doing it right. Disney Plus is definitely doing it right. And Netflix, because they, they fucking, they got the Royals, man. They, they got did. the Royals. I mean, they landed Harry and Meghan. Yeah. That, that's all you need to know about Netflix. They're kicking ass. So I was excited to hear about the project with Arnold. You know, father-daughter thing. with I, I, I like Arnold. I'm I do a fan. Too. I think he's a, a better actor than most people give him credit for, and I think the series will do well. So I was excited about that for sure. And just uh, Amazon. I'm every series they announced. I'm super pumped about. I yeah. just think they're killing it. You said Disney Plus is doing it right, and they are. But I think with um, original series like like you had talked about a couple weeks ago, I think Amazon is just really bringing the game. Yeah. I mean, they're doing really well. So yeah, agreed, agreed. And I mean, you know who other people are doing well and has shall live long and always prosper. The one and only Oprah. Oprah!